Really? This is the 10 o'clock one. You've had your coffee. Probably several cups. Try this again. Good morning. Good morning. All right, good. At least you're starting from a position of awake by the end of the sermon. We'll see. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome one and all to worship here, beautiful Savior Lutheran Church, on this Pentecost Sunday. Yes, some of you are wearing red. Some of you are wearing the other colors of the rainbow. Good. We need them all because God comes to us in a number of ways to show us God's love and grace. So welcome as we invite all to live in grace, generosity, reaching out, advocacy, compassion, and encouragement. Welcome, one and all, those of you in the space and those of you joining us through cyberspace. Now, this is usually the part where I tell you, help us be good stewards of God's creation and help us reuse our reusable seasonal bulletin. Guess what? We're at the end of the season. We don't reuse it anymore. So you can do with it as you wish. A brooch, a hat, you know, whatever. Bonus points for creativity. The insert, as always, is yours to take with, you know, the in, with the prayers, announcements, uh, you know, readings and things like that. And of course, everything can be found at beautifulsavior.net as well. Now, some of you may be going, Pastor, things look a little different up front. And... Um, you're messing with us. Yes. Yes, I am. It's Pentecost. It's called tradition. <laughs> the Spirit messes with us on Pentecost. And you may be wondering, okay, so what are we doing with this? You will find out. <laughs> Stay tuned. I've been told that anticipation and cliffhangers increases viewership and attention, so we'll see if that works. But have no fear, something good will be here. So one and all, as we gather in this space, there's a couple of different things to just be mindful of. There are things that are going on. First off, of course, we have our children's corner for our children and our childish ones who need closer adult supervision. Um, you wish to come up at this point in time already and start joining in, in those activities, uh, an opportunity to learn and grow and find some fun things up front. Then, of course, we have, uh, next, um, you know, we celebrated James between worship and Werner Hall today. If you came early, you got a chance to do it. Great. You got to celebrate him, Dr. Higgs, as it is um, now. Uh, we'll, we'll have to properly cap and gown him later, um, but he already has all of, his, all of his hoods and hats and all that kind of fun stuff. But congratulations to James and all the other graduates that have, you know, recently made those moves in their lives. On Wednesday, we have our midweek services uh, that is based on a Taze and Iona. It is an evening contemplative service. It is, starts at 6.15. We only got a couple more weeks before we take a summer break, though. So if you want to try it out or, you know, come, you got until June 14th. That will be the last Wednesday until August. But it's a lovely service that includes communion, and of course, it is streamed. James? You have something now. Good morning. Thank you, first of all, to all of you who stayed for Lutherans Linger Longer and helped celebrate my graduation. Um, yeah, I really appreciate all your kind words and, yeah, and how, how you've welcomed me through this year. Um, I'd like to invite you all to a community concert that will take place here on Saturday, June 10th at 4 p.m. The concert will be free to attend and we'll be, we will be accepting donations for Lutheran Social Services of the Southwest's Refugee and Immigrant Services. Um, and the proceeds from the concert will be donated to Lutheran Social Services in memory of Heidi Garish. Um, Daniel Linder, who's a piano faculty at the University of Arizona and you might have uh, remember him from earlier in the year, will perform a recital of uh, piano works by J.S. Bach, Beethoven, Aaron Copland, and Brazilian composer Almeida Prado. Uh, I hope you can all make it and that you invite people to attend. Um, it'll be a really wonderful concert. Um, and if you feel so moved to donate to an organization that provides critical services to refugees and immigrants in Arizona. 
uh, it is my goal to continue offering these free concerts to feature local musicians and fundraise for various community organizations in Arizona. So I hope to see you there. Thank you. Our congregation has a strong music heritage, and this is a way we can share it with the world. And Janice, another part of our heritage is our outreach and our generosity services through Community Connections. So good morning. Does this look familiar? Okay, everybody can relax. I am not collecting money again. Not today. Won't be long. I have to thank you. For the past several weeks, you saw me standing out in the narthex with the jar asking for your cash. I asked for donations of gift cards, paper towels, tissue paper, uh, toothbrushes and dish detergent. I asked for volunteers, I asked for bingo prizes, and you did not let me down. I was not surprised to tell you the truth. As usual, you always are very generous. I, I always say, when I tell my friends how generous you were, I feel like they think and I'm exaggerating. I am not. You are always so generous with every need that comes along. So I just want to say a thank you especially to, uh, we started out with Trader Joe's bags that needed decorating under Mary Haven Hill supervision. The little kids at the academy just made them so pretty, such pretty bags. Wednesday, we came here. Uh, I don't see Andy Anderson this morning, but his help was invaluable. Uh, he helped me keep control of our inventory and his muscle power helped us load everything into Frank's truck to take it to the site. Um, Geneva Cassell and uh, Carmen Dure helped that day. Then on Thursday, we went back for the actual Paz Cafe event. I want to tell you, three of our newest members, Lisa Shad and Linda Huffman and Carmen Dure, three new members stepped forward and said, I want to help, I want to participate, how wonderful. So we all went and it was great. And Pastor was the bingo caller. Yes, and he's so good. You can not tell, he can put that on his resume. Heaven forbid, I don't want you to leave, but if you ever have to, bingo. Yeah, you call bingo. You always thought that was a Catholic thing. No, 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 we do it also. So people stepped forward and donated wonderful bingo prizes, all the gift cards, everything I asked for. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. You did exactly, exactly our beautiful Savior, Jesus Christ. What did he tell us? Love thy neighbor as thyself. You did it. You did it. Thank you. Oh, I'm not done. Forgot my trusty oh. camera, a picture of all you people in red. You see, you're still participating. How wonderful is that? Are you ready, Pastor? <laughs> Thank you. You got to work it. You know, that's all I got to say is you got to work it. Flaunt it if you got it. In my case, it just have a lot of work. <laughs> but yes, we speak of generosity as the G in grace, and that is embodied in these situations. And so thank you. It, you know, I was the only clergy who was able to make it out of the three sponsoring churches. And it, wearing a clergy collar in that space was interesting. I mean, one, the, the thanks that, and the comments uh, that I received from many. But also, there were those in the room that did their level best to avoid me like the plague. And often because of the harm and the unlove that they experienced from clergy. But being there in that space, providing something else, even if it was something as goofy as calling bingo. By the way, you know how to make a good church person swear? Have another church person yell bingo. Yep, exactly. It works there too. Um, but just being able to be there and to... Proclaim love in action. In fact, that, I think that's on a t-shirt that this congregation put together last year. So as we seek to put love in action, grace, live in grace, thank you for being able to go and do that and see your work that you do 
in the name of God. Now, there's all kinds of stuff also in the bulletin for other items that are coming up. Lots of different fun things, as always. There's, you know, Pint with a Pastor and all these other things that are eventually coming back up again and all this stuff. But I want to remind you of something very important, and that is just simply in this space that you are alive. And so I invite you to take a deep breath. And then take another one. May you know that peace that surpasses understanding that comes from the Spirit. And in that peace, I invite you to rise as you're able and join me in confession and forgiveness. Eternal God, maker of the skies above, lowly Christ, lover of the earth and its people, Unfettered spirit, giver of gracious gifts, you are present among us. O hidden mystery, sun behind all suns, soul within all souls, in all we touch, in all we meet, you are present among us. As bearers of your image, we come to be reshaped. Dependent on your mercy, we ask to be made new. For the right roads we avoided traveling, and the kindly words we refused to share. For the false gods who received our worship, and the true selves we have starved of love. God, by your grace, forgive us. For the hidden hurts we have held too tightly, and the promises which we never kept. For the careless use of time and money, and the lame excuses we should never have made. God, by your grace... Forgive us. For all we should be and all we can amend, God, in your love, renew us. For all you have in store for us and all you demand of us, God, in your love, prepare us. For the life of the world and the love of its people, God, in your love, commit us. God, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. God have mercy on us. Hear and believe these words of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. Come and follow me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us join our hearts in prayer. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
seated and the children to come forward for the children's message. I get my hat. My head isn't pointy enough. <laughs> I'm waiting for this to snap. My head's a little big. Oh, yes. Hey, if I got my hat on, you got to wear yours. I feel like Dan Aykroyd in Saturday Night Live. How many of you get that reference? All right, I'm from France, right? You know. Yeah. Hi there. See, we got these hats. You know what? I have a point. And because of the two of them, I have three points. Here's the sermon. No. Uh, all right. So, do you know what it says on the hat? No. What does it say on the hat? Happy birthday to the church. You know churches have birthdays? No. No? Well, do you have a birthday? Yeah. Do you have a birthday? Yeah. Well, is that an important thing? My daddy is not home because he's sick and my mom is sick. Oh. Your mom and, your mom and James are sick? Uh -huh. Well, then we know who we're praying for, right? Mm -hmm. But we, you know, so that hopefully they're feeling better. But we have, you know, so, but today we're going to celebrate a little bit. We're not going to celebrate that mom and James is sick. That's not right. But we are going to, but we do get to celebrate the church. And sometimes we have candles, right? You put candles on a cake? Do you blow out candles? Yeah? Can you blow out some candles for me? Yeah. No? Yeah? yeah? Nope, you can't blow out that one though. That one I need. You got them. Um, all right, well, here. I got all of them. You got all of them? Well, you're supposed to share. That's because I have whole breath to get one. You got a whole lot of breath, huh? Uh, 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 uh. No, you're not blowing out new ones. This is, Tam this is Tamsin's. Now, here's the thing. We blow out candles, right? But... No, you already had some. My goodness. You got to wait till your birthday. We blow out these candles, but you notice that we don't blow out those candles? We didn't blow out this one? That, that candle's lit. Why? Because even though, even though we blow out these candles, we celebrate the fact that when we talk about the birthday of the church, we talk about the fact that the Holy Spirit is with us always. And that light is like that light there from our baptism. So may we remember to share that light now and always. And they're like, that's it. We're done. <laughs> the Spirit so moves and so we move. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. You can always sing a song going out. You are the church. We are the church together. Together. Their lesson? We turn to ours. The first reading is from the 11th chapter of Numbers. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, my Lord Moses, stop them. 
But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Word of God, word of life. Please join me in reading Psalm 104 responsively. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord, all I have May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. Our gospel lesson for this day comes to us from the second chapter of the, the gospel according to Acts. Glory to you, O Lord. I can see some of you going, ooh, 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 pastor, pastor, pastor. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, four gospels. Why are you saying Acts? It's one of those little things that people didn't realize, but Acts is really Luke part two. It's written by the same author and all that kind of stuff. And like all good sequels, someone else had to drop something in between, so we got John. So there you go. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this time, at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us, in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, Eh, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, Blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Gospel of our Lord. 
Please be seated. No offense, but, you know, that, that imagery at the end there, you know, when he's, you know, prophesying from Joel, he's repeating Joel. I mean, there's, there's let's say, so there's some stuff in there that's a little scary, you know, that, that you, time, you listen to and you go, wow, that's kind of a, mm, not exactly a friendly image. Well, to be honest, I had a nightmare the other night. Um, I went to hell, and Satan made me do karaoke with him. Yep, the devil made me do it. Now, many of you are looking at me very closely, and I give thanks for that, uh, especially through your glasses. I wore glasses for many years before I had the laser surgery. You know, I always want to respect people who wear glasses because you paid good money to see me. Um, You know, we've been doing a lot of work at home, and... uh, We just recently had to redo the garage door, (laughs) the opener, and everything else with it. It was not exactly an expected expense, and as you redo all these kinds of stuff, you get all these manuals. Well, I had to to go and invest in a new ladder, and I got one. It was a step-by-step guide. I know. I know. The jokes don't get any higher. Neither did the ladder. (laughs) Nearer my God to thee. I'll stop right there. Actually, I should have stopped a while ago. See, I already told you. I got you awake and see, hopefully that anticipation and cliffhanger is still holding you. But what do we do with this? This, this, you know, for all of you who have ever been asked to read on Pentecost and have been given the joyful assignment of reading Acts 2 and going, you want me to say who, what, where, and when? You're welcome. I did it today. But... What's all going on here? There's an awful lot going on in this lesson. There's an awful lot going on. Remember, Jesus just before told his disciples, right before his ascension, which we heard last week, go back, wait for power from on high, and then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Here's that. Here's that power from on high that comes down. There's a lot going on because you might look at this whole list and go, wow, it seems like the ends of the earth was in Jerusalem. Well, there's a bunch of stuff going on there. We normally look at Pentecost as like the birth of the church. Happy birthday, church. But in all honesty, Pentecost predates Christianity. The reason why there are so many people in in Jerusalem at that time from all different parts of the world, you know, different parts of the empire and around the area, is because there's a couple things going on. One is seven weeks after Passover was the traditional celebration of the receiving of the law at Mount Sinai. So you had a lot of devout people in Jerusalem there for that celebration, the gift of the Ten Commandments and the gifts of the laws at Sinai. But also it was the big harvest party. The spring harvest, the winter wheat and everything else like that, this is what's coming in right now. You wonder why one of the first assumptions of the people are is, oh, they're drunk. <laughs> Probably because there's a lot of drinking going on. If any of you have ever been in a small community after harvest time, You understand the parties that sometimes happen because, oh my gosh, we actually got one. And it was a celebration, but it also meant offerings to the temple and everything else like that. Now, I never did quite understand the whole, well, the reason why they're speaking in all these languages is because they were drunk. I have often experienced people who have drank too much thinking they're speaking English and they're only speaking gibberish. The only, time, the only things that I seem to see people think they can do when they've been drinking a lot is dance. <laughs> or sing karaoke, which I understand is a Japanese word for a drunk American tourist singing badly, but I may be wrong there. I don't speak Japanese. But you had all of these people there and all of this stuff going on and then there's this celebration that happens in their midst, a celebration of a gift that was given to them, the Spirit. 
And of course, it was a little crazy. It was a little, you know, it was like, what's going, what's all happening here? And it makes sense because honestly, we're still trying to figure out what that's go, what's going on when it comes to the Spirit. I think sometimes that's why, especially Lutherans, have such a hard time with the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and the Son and that crazy one we don't want to talk about too much. That keeps messing with us. That keeps doing things. But notice that the Spirit is not acting really crazy. There's no speaking in tongues. Like we think of tongues. There's speaking languages that exist. There's no angelic speech going on here. Their people are hearing it in their languages. It's giving them the ability to proclaim the good news in their mother tongue. This is, you know, so they're hearing it in all these different ones. But also one thing I'll say is, as you look at this list, some of these, I'm not entirely sure these groups existed at this time. Some of them are almost like historical creations. Elamites, Medes, some of them weren't really around and active as much anymore, if existing at all. Maybe then because the Spirit is not just telling us that we have this, it allows us to deal with people in a spatial sense, in different places, in different areas, but also a temporal sense. This Spirit is not just for one period in time. How do we know that? Why are you here? You weren't there in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. English isn't one of the languages spoken. I really think, though, it's kind of neat. I think one language was spoken, it was German, because, honestly, these these people were all early Lutherans. You doubt me? What's the question that they ask? What does this mean? I didn't know Martin Luther was alive. What does this mean? There's a question in the small catechism. What does this mean? Was ist das? Eh, German's not listed, but I'm sure that was an oversight. What does this mean? But that's part of the Spirit, folks. What does this mean? Maybe that's why we think we have problems with the Spirit, because sometimes it messes with us, and we're not entirely sure what does this mean. An awful lot. It means a great deal more. How? Because someone received it and shared it. And that's where we might say this is the birthplace of the church. Because someone received this and went. But notice that the languages are a vehicle. But one of the most important things is the languages, the most important language, though, is love. How are we proclaiming the good news? You know, I think of, you know, my experience at Paz Cafe. And I think about those people seeing there. It's one thing for me to have been saying certain things, aside from B25 and 64 and all that kind of stuff. Because I was there, because I was there and others were there as a part of all of these others who shared different things. And so there was tangible, physical things, food and items and even just fun and fellowship. Some way or another, the language of love that they needed to hear, they received. They received the good news of God in Jesus Christ because somehow it was proclaimed to them in words, but also in deed. And if we think about our lives, that's more often than not what happens to us. It wasn't just words that came to us. It was an experience. It was some deed. It was some act. Some way that showed us that we were of value and that we were loved. 
that we were given gifts, that we were of value. Now, on that point, I need to raise something. We, you know, one of the most important things that the Holy Spirit does to us is mess with us in our sense of order. What I mean by this is simple. Oftentimes, I see people and I ask people to get involved with certain things or to do certain things, and the response I get is, well, pastor, I can't do what you do. I can't do what I do. <laughs> Let's be honest, brutally honest sometimes. No, you don't have to do what I do. That's not the point. But you are beloved, and you are gifted, and you are called, that God has gifted you through the power of the Holy Spirit to be the person God needs in the places where God has called you. That God is there with you and calls you forth to go. Just as you've done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. In, in baptism, let your light so shine before others. Well, it's not your light. It's the light that was given to you. We go and do things and show love, not because if once we achieve certain things and we've attained certain projects and we've checked off certain boxes, we've all of a sudden attained God. But no, the God, God's going to come to us. Here they were in that room. At least this time it wasn't locked. They were following instructions. The Spirit came to them where they were. And from there they went to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. They didn't go to the ends of the earth and went, oh, there he is. We don't ask to find Jesus. Have you found Jesus? As if he's lost. Jesus finds us. The Spirit comes to us and blesses us as we are, where we are, with various gifts and talents to go and do things to show and share the good news of God in Jesus Christ. The different languages that we may be able to proclaim, which may be one thing or another. <laughs> I love the giggles. <laughs> hey, the giggles, I like that one. I'm just glad it wasn't something like Highway to Hell or something like that. <laughs> Living on a prayer, that would be kind of fun. The good, the bad, the ugly, that's mine. Which is why I make sure my sil mine silenced. Because it's actually gone off in church. It actually has. Uh, life happens, right? And that's all right. Because that's what this Pentecost is about. That's what this day is about and what our life of faith is about. It's about receiving these gifts of grace and then going, well, what does this mean? And in hope and faith, following in the grace and love of God that comes to us first, now what do we do with it? How do we show this? How do we share it? And it isn't about being pastor. Trust me, I'd rather not be wearing all this stuff. It's getting warm in Tucson this point of the year. It isn't about this. In what we wear. It's about what we do. How do we share and proclaim the good news of God? What's the language of love that you use? Where's the space and the place where God has put you so to do that? This is what it's about. And the Spirit is going to screw with us and mess with us and tell us, well, you know, you got to go and do this. And we're going to go, well, I can't. Yes, you can. As Paul would write in Romans, even when you don't even know what to pray, the Spirit intercedes for you with sighs too deep for longing. Even when you don't even have words and you're just kind of going, oh, the Spirit is there already working for you. I can do all things through him who strengthens me, says the one who by the Spirit was able to go out to the ends of the earth. Sometimes it's the ability to deal with your neighbor and love them as yourself. 
to be able to bridge the gap and to speak a different language to someone else who might also speak the same language as you, but because of their experience in life and everything else like that, may be as alien as anything else. But the ability to go and to show some sign of love. And yes, it comes to you and not just to me. And so I invite you to remember that gift given to you. If you repeat after me the promises God gave you in holy baptism. I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. I've been marked with the cross of Christ forever. I am Christ's. You're already there. You've already got it. You are Christ's. You are part of the family. And yes, we are marked with the sign of the cross of Christ forever, which is a reminder of the fact that yes, there is failure. Yes, there is death. Yes, there are things that go horribly wrong, but it's never the last thing. It is always a reminder of new life and new hope and another chance. And you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Yes, you've been given gifts. You've been blessed to be a blessing. But start here. Remember that God loves you, and so do I. Amen. As we confess the faith of the church, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we come to the prayers of the church, we lift up the joys and concerns that are shared with us. And so I'm just going to ask, any more yellow prayer cards out there? You would start bringing them to the forward. And as we prepare our hearts, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children. For all those needing health and healing, especially Jim, Lynn, Aaron, Nancy, Edie, Jody, John. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children when we pray. For all those dealing with chronic illness or cancer, especially Carol Ann, Gilberto, Janine, Heidi, Preston, Rachel, Aaron, Shirley, Ryan, Jake. And for those nearing the end of their lives, Javier, Ayers, George, Ron. For all those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Jordan Paganini, Barry Kinsey, Lois Shade. Peace and comfort for Chris, Connie, Nick, Andy. We lift up a special prayer this day for Reese, who is in need of a kidney. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Hear us, children, when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us, children, when we pray. On this day of Pentecost, we give thanks for the gift of your Spirit. May it inspire us in your grace. May it comfort us. May it advocate to us and for us. May we recognize the blessings that we have received and in its wisdom go forth and share them with the world as you would have us do. May this grace of the risen Christ be with us as we go forward in faith and hope and love for the world. 
On this day, we remember and we give honor to those who have died in the service and defense of the country. On this Memorial Day weekend, may we be mindful of those who went and did not come back. And may we be mindful of those who said goodbye and never saw them again. May we be mindful of all of those gifts and all of those things that have been given to us by others so that we may truly be thankful of all that we have and in turn share and show for all that is on our hearts right now. And from the children, appropriately enough, we heard it earlier, prayers for James and Mommy. May they feel better. But on this day, may we also remember that gift of life, that life that has come to us, that the Spirit advocates to us and for us. And so we celebrate the birthdays of Dick Flonus today. It's the birthday of the church and it's the birthday of the church council president. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> Dennis Eskridge, Paul Gazzetti, Helen Reed, and Ian MacArthur. And the anniversaries of Colleen and Craig McDonald, Jody and Corey Layton, and Edie and Richard Mauta. Special prayers for Edie as she, re she heals from her surgeries. And for all of those other things and signs of life and love, all those other ways in which your spirit has come to us and your good news has been proclaimed to us in all the different languages. May we see it, may we celebrate it, may we give thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share some token, sign of Christ's peace and love with one another now and always.
Let us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now some of you may be noticing that I have acquired a new piece of my outfit. Um, it's because they actually made one for me. The thing was that they had to resize it a couple of times. For some strange reason, they thought my head was bigger than it actually was. By a lot. <sighs> That's okay. I have a good idea now. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Gathered around the throne of grace, let us sing. the gift of your spirit that comes to us, that sustains us and advocates for us and to us. We give thanks for the gift of Jesus and his body and blood that we receive these signs of grace that the spirit reinforces and sends us out with. And so we remember on the night in which our Savior was betrayed, he took bread he blessed it and broke it, gave it for us to eat, and said, take and eat, all of you. This is my body. It's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, take and drink. This cup contains the blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me of me. So once again, may we be fed and nourished by your grace and your love, dear Lord. And may your spirit come and raise us to newness of life, and by your wisdom and power send us forth to share that gift of grace and love, so all the world may proclaim Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, dear Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Keep us from temptation and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come and know Christ broken and poured out for you. I invite the congregation to be seated and the community assistants to come forward at this time. Now, you've been waiting with anticipation, I can tell. What is going on with communion? And so are the communion assistants. Come forward, ladies, it's all right. Yes, it's going to be a little different. You're going to be not coming down the center aisle, you're going to be coming down the side aisles where you're going to be greeted down here on the edge. One of us will be there and one over the air and you will receive the wafer. We have gluten-free wafers for those who need them. You will turn towards the inside where the communion assistants will be, perfect placement, ladies, where you will receive the wine and the grape juice. Grape juice is towards the center. You see the little stands with the bowls? That's where the empty plates, the empty cups go. If you wish, I invite you to contemplate the gift of the Spirit and the light that was given to you and add yours to the cross that is at the front. There are regular votives that you can light. There are also the electric ones, if you prefer that one. Some of them require a real good hard, so it's all right. 
Either one is fine. Again, there's also prayer stations to, on the backside of the sanctuary for those who would like to use that as well. For those of you joining us at home, plate, cup, some, you know, bread, crackers, wine, grape juice, something simple. Jesus sat at a banquet table and took the simple basic staples off of it as a reminder of God's presence on earth and what God can do with simple things like us. So the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, come receive these gifts of grace. We got We got it? All right.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen <laughs> Go serve the risen one. Alleluia is right.